Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am making a soap using this fragrance from Nature's Garden. It's called Honey Bunny and I've soaked with this before. It smells so good. It's got a very strong honey scent. Sweet but not sickly sweet. It's just beautiful and so I'm going to do a milk and honey inspired soap. So I'll be doing goat milk, the milk and oil method, um, with, and then I'll be adding some local raw honey in here so it's gonna have milk and honey in it and I'll do probably a little extra oats in there too I just it smells scrumptious and so I want this soap to be scrumptious <laughs> so for the color swirls let me show you what I've got here uh, from rustic essentials I have sunburst sparkle mica and it's a really shimmery yellow it's beautiful and it made me think of you know the honey bunny and then along with this I'm going to use from Wholesale Supplies plus Caramel Brown Butterscotch. Oh, there we go. Those two. Isn't that pretty? To me, that just looks mm, yummy. So that's what's in my mind. That's the fragrance we're going to do. I'll probably do a hanger swirl like I normally do. I just, you know, I love those hanger swirls and swirly patterns and all of that. And I haven't decided what I'm going to do on top. I might do a twisty top. That's what I did last time. Um, and if I do, I'll talk you through how, what I mean when I say twisty top. We'll talk... <sighs> We'll talk about it when we get there. I have to see how everything's behaving. Uh, this fragrance did behave last time I used it. It was wonderful. But you know, every time you soap, things don't always go exactly the way you plan. So I'm keeping my options open, but I'm thinking about a twisty top. And if we do one, I'll talk about it when we do it. <laughs> I hope that all makes sense. So now I have to go get my goat milk out and get everything prepped and ready to go. And let's come back and make some honey bunny milk and honey inspired soap. All right, it's soap additives time and I've got a bunch of stuff here that we're gonna put in our oils, our base oils. So I have two different single batches. That's how I do a double batch. I work in single batch loads. It just works for me. So let's start with the milk in oil. I have my goat milk here that I've discounted from my lye solution to make room for this portion of liquid in my soap. And I'll get this in both and then we will talk about the honey. So got one, here's number two. Oh, it smells good in here. I have the fragrance oil is already in uh, my base oils because it does behave very nicely. So we've got that already in here. Here is my local raw honey. I've warmed it up so it's a little bit fluid. It's not hot, but it's just warm because I want to be able to pour it all in here. Um, that's about an ounce and a half. You don't want to do too much. Honey will heat up your soap like crazy. And so I am going to remember to not put a blanket on this today. And just, uh, it will still go through gel phase with just the lid on, um, but you have to watch it. Honey heats up your soap. Okay, let's get on to the dry ingredients. Because I want this to just be so luscious, milk and honey, I'm gonna do cream powder in here, along with my kale and clay and colloidal oats. All right. So two tablespoons of heavy cream powder in each of these buckets. So good. I really, really love how milk feels in the lather of your soap. I just, it just kicks it up a notch for me. Okay, here's my kale and clay. This is a two tablespoon scoop. We'll do one of those in each. And colloidal oats. I'm going to do a nice heaping tablespoon of the colloidal oats tablespoon. That's a two tablespoon measure. That's pretty heaping. That's probably three tablespoons. But I don't know. It feels like it just kind of goes with the theme, the milk and honey and the oats in there. So we're going to do extra oats today. So now let me get this all blended up as my lye solution's cooling and we will come back and make some soap. and I did blend these really well. It took a while to get all the ingredients blended into the oils and let them just fully absorb in there. And I've got my colors dispersed in a little distilled water off to the side. 
Like I said, the fragrance is already in here and here is my lye solution. I did not put any sugar in here because the honey is in here. So that's enough sugar to support a really lovely thick lather. Sugar is a lather booster. So honey is a form of sugar. It makes for a beautiful soapy bubbly bar of soap. But I do have uh, Tussle Silk Fibers and Sodium Lactate is in my little magical pot here. So now I am going to stir this in um, with my stick blender and blend up to emulsion, split off for the colors. I'm going to proceed with caution because honey can heat things up. So I'm not going to, I'm going to try very hard not to over blend this. So I'm just going to take my stick blender and stir and pulse. We're going for emulsion and you're going to see this start to beige up. It'll be, that's the lye caramelizing with the goat milk and the cream and all that good stuff. Um, this fragrance does have a little vanillin, so it's going to be a tan color anyway, but I think that just looks beautiful. Milk and honey, that creamy tan color, that's fine with me. All right, let's get this going with our colors here. Time to do the twisty top and you can do really straight stripes on top or messy stripes like I have here um, but you need something thin a popsicle stick would work the end of my spoon works great so that's what I use and uh, this is a little soft but I think it's gonna hold so we'll go ahead and give it a try I'm gonna put this in and you bring it up through the stripes and you just give a little twist so uh, I'll just show you go in and a little twist and it makes the prettiest little stripey twisty top. I don't know what else to call this. It's kind of like a mini scoop top, but I think it's so pretty. So this fragrance behaves perfectly for something like this. And there we go. Isn't that just, it's so cute. So let's do this side. I'm not ambidextrous, so I don't always work <laughs> in the same direction, you know, when I have to change directions. I don't do very well with that. I'm one of those people where I always had to change my baby's diapers with their head going the same direction and their legs going the other way. I couldn't, if you flip the baby around on me, I literally couldn't change the diaper. It had to be, they had to be going one direction. That is kind of how I roll, not ambidextrous. So I'm going to finish this top and then we'll get on to our next batch, batch number two of this luscious soap.
it's the next day it's been about 24 hours and i'm excited to get in here these smell so good they did go through gel phase i had that wooden lid on here and i came down and checked on these two i had them double stacked like this and uh, we did get gel phase and i actually did come down and steam the tops earlier and that's why they have a nice glossy sheen to them they didn't have any soda ash but they were just a little dull and i wanted those twisty little twist to really shine. So these are steamed tops. I'm sorry, I forgot to bring my camera and film that, but let's get in here and see how the swirls came out on the inside. Let's get into our first loaf here. Isn't that top cute? I have seen this style of top with a red and green for Christmas. It's so adorable. I just love this style. And I'm not sure what else to call it. I think twisty top is just what I'm gonna stick with because I don't know what else to call it. If you have a different name for that style of top, let me know, love to hear it. Let's see these swirls. Oh my goodness, that's pretty kind of looks like feathers so pretty so let's talk about this fragrance honey bunny first of all it smells really delightful very if you like honey that sort of I don't know how to describe honey it's sweet but there's more to it it's like a deep uh, there's depth to it and uh, that's how this smells it's very dominantly honey scented which is delightful all right next loaf and these colors are just gentle and subtle, kind of like the scent, that honey scent. It's not, uh, it's not overpowering, it's just beautiful. I think these are just luxury and, oh my goodness, and just, I'm very happy with how these came out. I think they're adorable. So here's a funny fact, my daughter my, one of my daughters, uh, my youngest daughter, and her husband put honey in their coffee. Now, I've heard of honey in tea, but I hadn't heard of it in coffee. So have you heard of honey in coffee before? And if you have, have you tried it, and do you like it? <laughs> That's the question. I, uh, I haven't tried it. I like stevia, but um, yeah, every time they come over and we're, you know, having to get together or whatever and make a cup of coffee, I have to put my honey out for them. And I think it's so cute. And she'll make them a cup of coffee with lots of honey. And I don't know, it sounds kind of good. I don't know why I haven't tried it yet. Have you tried honey in your coffee? That's the question. All right, well, let's keep cutting. Okay, last loaf on this slab. I have three more loaves to cut. Um, and let's talk about the fragrance. Uh, this fragrance also, not only does it smell really nice, it behaves beautifully in cold process soap. Uh, so it is a two thumbs up from me all across the board. I really enjoy this fragrance. Oh, that's pretty. It looks like a little feather. All right, maybe we should do a preview here. What do you think? Let's do some soapy patterns and see what we got. Ha, huh, that's cute. I think I'm gonna have some patterns to do at the end here. And I didn't take off a lot of batter to color. I just wanted those swirls to be wispy and just kind of a hint of some caramely honey type swirls and I think we got it. So I'm pretty happy with how these came out. And I know with that honey and the goat milk and the cream, they're gonna lather. It's gonna feel just smooth and luxurious. So I'm 
really happy with how these came out. All right, let's get into my next slab of soap here. This is very satisfying, just sitting here cutting these. It smells good in the studio. It's calming and soothing. I wish y'all could be here in the studio and join me. Um, I just really love cutting soap. It's, it's rewarding. I think it's just fun. You cut into it and you see the fruits of your labor and you're like, wow, nice. <laughs> I love it. Right, next loaf. And uh, these little end pieces, just in case you don't know, let me show you. So this skinny end piece goes in my soap uh, bundle. I stack these in bundles of four slices so you get little samples of soap. You can buy a soap bundle and then these bigger slices that aren't quite a full bar size. I make one soap sample or one soap quarter out of it. This is about a quarter size bar. So I'll make one of those and then the rest I cut into sample size bars that go out in every order. If you buy from me, you get a little sample of soap in every order, kind of randomly selected. I keep a little basket full of samples that I can just reach in there and grab. I try to give um, my orders a soap that they didn't buy so they can try something new. So that's what those little end slices are all about. And uh, when I come in in a few hours to bevel the sides of these and do my stamping like I always do. I will shave into my bucket and then I'm going to dump my bucket into my soap scrap pack that I'm going to send to a donation site and they're going to be making new soap out of old soap and then donating it and I think it's just a wonderful cause. So I am still trying to fill my soap scrap pack and I'll show you that at the end but that's where my shavings go. I do shave into my bucket just because it fits up on my counter easier <laughs> and then I dump it in the box later. But all that being said, thank you so much for joining me today and if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please hit that subscribe button, like the video if you liked it or don't like it, it's up to you, but I appreciate you taking the time to be with me today and thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.